everybody. So at the end of this week, we have them coming out to do the spray foam insulation course. So we're laying everything out on the inside so we know where all the electrical goes because that's our next step is laying out all the electrical and getting an idea of our drains and everything going between joist and making sure we've got everything um, in the proper place so we don't have to harm any of our structure. So I put a line here for the hallway. I'm going to make it 36 inches. The bathroom door is probably only going to be 30 inches. Well, let's see. Well, if it's five foot, I can probably only go 30 inches because I'm going to have this bathroom is five foot wide and we're going to have a pocket door here. So there's no, no, nothing to obscure any problem. But in October of 2015, I broke my ankle and it was non weight bearing. So I had to either have a scooter or a walker or a wheelchair to get around. And we had one step down into our living room, which was the only step in the whole house, but it made it hellacious um, for me. I, in fact, I couldn't even bring a drink down from the kitchen into the living room and sit. John had to take care of me 100%. He was awesome. But that taught me all about universal design. So I'm making sure, and in, our other bathroom that we had in Tulsa, um, I had a 30 inch pocket door. That's all I could put in. And so you could wheel a wheelchair in and I, you can get a wheelchair all the way in here and be able to use the toilet. And I want some good space around the toilet because when you're in a wheelchair, you need some mover, maneuverability and you can use the um, vanity for a lift and I'm also going to put on the wall over here um, a handrail. There'll be a wall, a handrail on this wall, and we'll build an extra piece. I'll put like a two by 10 in here to nail the handrail to. Same on this wall, so that it's beefy. And the same right here, so that when you get in and out of the bath, you have something to hold on to. Real important, older you get, the more you might need it. And my mom is 83. So this is her bedroom. On the other side of that blue line, this blue line, this is her bedroom. And I've given her eight and a half feet. Uh, it's not luxurious, but the bed's only six foot deep. So she has two and a half feet to get around to this side if she needs to. But she can always just bring a wheelchair and get in and out of bed and not ever have to make it to this side. Thoughts you have to have. And this is the window John and I drove from our house here in Arkansas, the Ozarks here in Arkansas, up to Rolla, Missouri. And what I thought I was gonna end up spending about $500 for, we got one extra window, because John bargained for that. It was a picture window. Not sure what I'll do with it, but it had two matching um, casement windows that open up. Those are going in the mudroom. This window we got from him for $100, it's a casement window in really good shape and it's got the wood on the inside of it. So so, that'll fit our six inch walls. Yeah, so this is really nice. Big casement window. That was the last window we needed to finish off the exterior. It'll go here. So a little smaller than the opening. Yeah, but we can adjust because we're in the adjustment phase. Then we also went to a little town close to us. We didn't have to drive quite so far. Oh, well, we went to Rolla, and then we jag we did a little jag over to Jefferson City, and we picked up the bathtub. Now, this is the same bathtub I had put in when we lived in Tulsa, and it's a $280 bathtub. And it's nice and deep. You can soak in it, cover up the boobies so you stay nice and warm, and all the women understand that. But you can soak really nice in this tub. So we got this for 100 we got our windows for $220, that's four of them. Four, three casement, one big picture, $220. $100 instead of almost $300. And it cost us $70 in gas and we had a great day together and we it was a lot of fun and the drive was beautiful. So we, instead of paying 1200 bucks full retail, we did it Well, for, probably more than 1200 to do the whole thing. Well, yeah, by the time you had tax and other things too, so. 
You got about, what, 75% off? Yeah. About? About. I guess you're the math brain. So um, we also got this window. This is another casement window. And I wanted a smaller one that would go up above the tub. Could never source one of those. This has never been used, brand new. We got it for $100. And it's two foot by three foot. And it's gonna come down to this level over the tub. So I made sure that it was all vinyl and we'll keep the contract, everything that opens it on that side. Of course, the water will be spraying in here, but John will be able to see out. I'll be able to peek out, I guess. But we'll have a nice window to bring light into so the bathroom. It's gonna go horizontal here. You, you originally wanted vertical, so you could, you could be laying in the tub and just look out the window but it was gonna to let too much water into it, so you decided to go up top here, yeah. uh, horizontally. Most of the time it's up higher and it's only like nine inches, and it's an awning window that opens up outside so that all the moisture, of course we're gonna have an exhaust fan in here, but I like fresh air a whole lot. And I also like natural light coming into the bathroom. So it'll go up here, we're gonna take this out, create the header just like there, build it all up, put our window in, and that works awesome. Um, and then this came, we bought this a long time ago to go in John's office at our home, other home. And so all these cabinets we had bought to be able to stage into this home. Or a home. Or a home at some point. So this came this came out of the office and this is going to go right here when you walk in the door lots of storage then i'll have a 36 inch vanity that goes right here so all of our plumbing will be in this wall and then on this side you see the kitchen sink window kitchen sink will be underneath this open it up get some airflow so i'll have a kitchen sink here if I want to put a dishwasher, we'll have to decide on that. I have room to put it here. And then two foot over here, this will be a little L-shaped kitchen. Cat counter space, right in here, there's gonna be a hot water heater that we'll build in. Either we'll put it here or we're gonna put it out in the um, mud room, just on the other side. But thinking right here, hot water, right at the sources and um, then that means the propane gas line will come up right here. My stove will sit right here attached to the propane and then right here will be the space on the other at the end of the hallway for the refrigerator. So I've got a refrigerator, the stove, maybe dishwasher, sink and then it goes out about 18 inches a little bit further that way and that's our kitchen. So right in this area, giving us three foot from the sink and three foot from the cabinetry over here will be a, about a five foot island. And I, we're gonna do walnut. We have some old walnut. And we're gonna make that the countertop here. And we can work on canning and all that kind of stuff in this area. I might, well, I don't know. Let's say walnut right now, but it would be nice to be able to not go out dough and stuff here too, wouldn't it? So that might be granite or marble or something. But that's if we can source it, because we're we're our frugal. And these are all out of John's office too. In fact, this is still stuff with I can't believe we moved this thing. And it's so heavy you cannot pick it up. It's all John's boxes and books and crazy stuff. But we have these two. And then I have my kitchen sink. This is the sink that goes above your refrigerator. We have it. Now they're not exactly matching, but we'll turn them into that. Um, but these have the soft glide, soft close. The black ones do. These don't. I can add that to the mechanism for the drawers and stuff. And then we got donated to us. I have a great big stainless steel, no, cast iron Kohler sink with the big, one big side and one smaller side, but it got chipped in the moon and it's super heavy. 
We got this donated to us. Big, little, I can rinse everything here, wash everything here. We even got a faucet. This is our second faucet. We'll see what, which one works the best. This was donated to us, along with another cabinet. It's kind of like these. And these are nice construction. They're not attractive, but they're nice construction. And um, made out of wood, so plywood and stuff. You can't, can't complain about that. And then we also got donated to us from the same people, a Vita hood, which I did not have. So this will go over the stove, of course. Awesome. It's got great lights in it, great covers. And I'm going to vent it out the back instead of the top, and it's going to go up the wall, out the ceiling. Perfect. We cook a lot of Indian food, which has the strong smell of curry, um, garam masala. I mean, it's just a strong smelling, so it'll be nice to be able to vent that right out the ceiling, the roof. Yay. So, kitchen goes to about here. And then our living area goes to right between the big eight-foot door and the window in our bedroom. So this is about 14 by 14 for a living area. And our wood-burning stove will sit. Can you turn the fan down? Thanks for all. sweat a little for you. Um, the wood burning stove somewhere in this location. Then we can just come in off the mud room, bring the logs in right here. Plus it's centrally located. Heat goes down the hallway to heat up mom's room, the bathroom, and then heat will go around. Our bedroom door will be down on this area. I'm not that much on heat. A whole lot of heat in the bedroom at night. I like to kind of nippy, cover all up, stay nice and warm. In fact, I sleep with the window open most of the time when he doesn't know about it. He's gotten more used to it, but uh, I sneak it every now and then. So the door will be here, then this is the bedroom. So our sofa in here will sit here in front of this window, but at least it can get a good cross breeze which is awesome. And this will be blocked by the sofa, but that just means little dog noses won't dirty this one. Every other window in our house, you'll see dog nose prints because they come down so low. And that is the main reason we turned all of these. These are transom windows out of a humongous house. Probably a 7,000 square foot house with probably nine foot, 10 foot ceilings. And this is supposed to be a transom and it's supposed to be flipped over. But I didn't want my dogs jumping on my screens. And they would have had screens and I would have been replacing screens all the time if I had it turned the right way. So we just overturned it. We got to work on the mechanisms to make them flow better. But um, the screens will be up here. Plus, I mean, the sofa's going to be here. So this is great having it. Sofa's not going to be there. Well, the sofa's going to be right That's there. That's the bedroom. Yeah, but it's the same height though, right? Yeah. Well, that was a little bit lower, but um, we'll have airflow. We still haven't put these in. I'm waiting for some strong guys to come help John. And maybe it will be the spray guys. Maybe they can help carry. Strong people to help for that. And that. that. Those are big windows. Big, heavy, heavy windows. This one was almost too heavy for me, but we made it. These are bigger. And um, like I said, Dog prints, those will be covered in dog prints. This um, creates an awesome breeze through here. Straight south, straight north. Wind's blowing out of the north today, like under 90 at the end of July in the south. I mean, you can't complain, can't complain about this kind of weather. Great breeze coming through. And then our eight foot doors. What's going to be the Just trick is, by that door. is finding a screen or getting the screen made to go in here. So look at this door. Eight, eight foot. <laughs> but you can see the difference. You can see the sun coming in and then you can see where the sun comes through the, the glass. I was hoping for passive solar, but I'm not sure 
or high dollar windows are going to allow too much passive solar to come through and heat us up. Uh, we'll see. If not, maybe at some point we'll decide to change out um, the glass so we can get more passive solar. Because our only heat source will be the wood burning stove and what comes flooding in from the south in the winter. Um, really pleased with it though. Glad we put no windows on the west. I didn't want any west sun beating in on us. We're gonna have a great, we've been checking into whole house fans. We'll show you what we decide on for that. But that should pull air in at night. We will have ceiling fans. John's checking into DC motors on the ceiling fans. So they use less electricity and work well with our solar. If not, we'll have some ceiling fans. They won't be huge ones, but I'm gonna even have a ceiling fan in the bathroom. I love ceiling fans in the bathroom, especially when you're drying your hair, ladies, and it's so hot in there. It would be great. Now, now you know, this, this is what we've been doing, traveling all over, gathering up goodies and bargains from Craigslist. We found them all on Craigslist. But it seems like everything other than that bathroom window has been at least two hours away because we live out in BFE. But we like it. We like BFE. There's just not a whole lot of Craigslist. Like Lake of the Ozarks, smaller than the little town we live by, they, they have all sorts of stuff, but not by us. I don't know. But check back with this. What about the roof? What about the roof? I don't think there's an update on the roof yet. Yeah, you did an update on the roof. He, he got the waterproofing up on the roof and the vertical purlins. Now we're gonna go out, put up the um, insulative barrier. Radiant barrier. Radiant reflective barrier. Dual sided radi radiant barrier with mylar in it. And we're going to do a double roof, a double roof. So. There'll be, uh, there's gonna, there's purlins actually up on the roof now. They run the, vertically and then he's gonna put this on and then we're gonna run purlins going horizontally. So there's an air space under the barrier and above the barrier. And then we will screw down our metal sheets that are right out there on the trailer. That's the other score we made. Well, let's go see it. Um, that is, the other score, we got that about two hours away during a big storm. So we got more of that coming. They're 16 feet long. They go to the end of our... Um, Eaves. Well, actually our exposed rafter tails. Mm -hmm. They go out there. And um, we got enough to put on the enclosed porch. The screened in porch we'll do on the east side at a later date. And we have enough to put over the six, the six and a half foot by 16 foot mud room that will go out here. That will be, we'll be able to cut the 16 foot panels into eight foot sheets and then cover the mud room. And we've got about, a, I guess we're going to do about a three and a half overhang in the front. With three and a half what? Three and a half foot overhang of the metal sheets so that at some point if we want we're going to beef it up enough that we can um, install solar panels because John would like to get solar panels to run the refrigerator and what else? Refrigerator, freezer. We're going to get a DC solar based refrigerator. DC solar based freezer. That's what he says, but I'm not thinking so. I think we're gonna get a, like a real live, honest to God freezer that has enough space for me to work with. And then we're gonna have split unit Solar, AC. DC split unit. Solar AC. assist, yeah. Can run mainly off of the solar panels, but then uh, when there isn't enough sun, it'll run off its own uh, batteries. It'll be independent of our house system. So we'll at least have two split units, one for mom's room, and then maybe just one out here. I don't necessarily need one in the bedroom, I don't think. But we've lived without a, any kind of AC in our bedroom at night 
for two, three, this is our third summer. So I don't know if I want to change it. This will be so much more insulated and stay so much cooler that I don't think I'm going to need it. I can just use the in-house, the whole house fan is the hopes there. But John would like to be able to put some solar panels on the front of the house. And so that is about three and a half feet. So our overhang will go there. We've got enough metal to do that also. And also to build some little awnings a little bit closer to the windows to block any rain from coming in. And also to, to do a skirt around the bottom, I think. But our metal came from a guy that's never been used. Do you wanna, you wanna take us out oh, and show yeah, us some metal? Let's take it. And then let's go look at the purlins and how we did the roof sheathing. My metal, though, has a patina already on it. It's been sitting, waiting to be used for two years. So it's and not you this. wanted that? I, this is exactly what I wanted. I did not want anything super shiny. I also didn't want anything super rustic. <laughs> I know that's the look, but I didn't want to put that up there. Or use panels with holes in them. Yeah, I didn't want that either. So these are patinaed without holes. Awesome. I put it out there, and that's what I got back exactly what I wanted. So I just put all my brain power on all the things I want. And somebody all of a sudden comes and says, hey, do you need a Vina hood? Or Craigslist finally shows up with the perfect panels for us. No holes, virgin, virgin with a patina. So we'll be getting more of that. And then our mud room. It's actually an animal room because all my dogs will go out there. I'll build little cubbies that the little puppies can but sleep before in. Before we do mudroom, let me, uh, I'm going to walk up on the oh, roof okay. up here and I'll show you go walk what we just there. finished up here. got all this done coming in uh, before all the rains and stuff hit and it kept everything dry it's pretty awesome we have the um, the asphalt uh, uh, what do you call it ice dam extra sheets and stuff here I got two layers of sheets on this actually sorry one layer four feet wide all the way up over there those uh, ends will be cut off and then you'll have a, a three foot uh, three and a half foot overhang that way, just like the La Arboleda design from Reclaimed Spaces or reclaimedspace.com. Where'd you go? Okay, so my thoughts on the mudroom I have six Papillons. I have three Aussies, and we're gonna breed Aussies. So I also need a place where Mariah can keep her babies and it's out of the house since we did that in the trailer. Don't really wanna do that again. So our mudroom will be six and a half by 16. We'll have right over here that little mudroom bench, you know, with the cubbies underneath for shoes, a place to sit, put your shoes on, hang all of our coats and all of our Take care of the homestead gear right here and the door will be directly in front on this side i'll put the um standing or the chest freezer the, that type right in here our windows will go will come down to about here and then um on this end will be a bench that has cubbies underneath it I want six cubbies so all the papillons can find a place to sleep. Plus they can jump up on the bench, look out the window, which is what they like to do. I'll have a doggy door coming from somewhere in here into this room. And then a doggy door from somewhere in here going out down a ramp or something for the dogs. Um, so we don't have to keep opening doors anymore. Of course I can lock them and close them when we're gone or at nighttime to keep the critters out. But we'll have lots of storage up here. Next to the freezer will be a propane heater 
which will tee off of the propane line that's already underneath the house. And it'll come over here. We'll have a little heater out here for winter. No AC or anything for summer, just two windows that open, cross breeze and a door that can open. Probably a ceiling fan out here, but I'm planning on having a nice space that I can put the animals and even um, put a doggy gate or something here to keep them all on this side for when if guests come and they can just walk in and not be bothered by animals. But the little puppies can stay here for the eight, nine weeks it takes until they go to their forever homes. But that will make life really nice. All of our big boots, um, bib overalls, insulated bib overalls, all that stuff can hang out here. Anything. I might even put one of the um, like garage sinks or something, a shop sink in here to make it more functional but I, I don't know. Perfect location for animals. And the next time we get a turkey and the other two turkeys die and we're stuck with just one turkey and we gotta be this parents, it can live out here too. This, Frenchie says it's a barn. I say it's a mudroom. You know? Whatever works. And we're gonna cover this vinyl flooring. Easy to wash off vinyl flooring. But that's it guys, um, we gotta drive into town, take a look and find out how the overflow and the plumbing for the bathtub work, the plumbing for the toilet works, so we can make sure we have everything located correctly and then come back, start nailing in the boxes that John got, where are they? And for our outlets, John is going to do, I, he said it was the European method. But what we're gonna do is we'll have an outlet with a switch so we can stop electricity going to whatever switch, you know, and all of the gadgets that you have that... Phantom loads. Yeah, we can turn those off at nighttime. That's, that's our plan. So we'll have these and these for all of our outlets so it's gonna look weird but it'd be so functional. And That's we'll what be, they do in Europe. Every we'll outlet has a, you don't, you only turn the outlet on when you want to use it. Yeah, and why not? And so we'll, we'll be putting these in today and then drilling holes, running some wiring so that towards the end of the week, foam insulation can be sprayed in. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Make some comments if you'd like. And subscribe if you'd like. We'd love it. Have a good one. Bye.